They can't all be Call Me By Your Name or Shape of Water, can they? These are my picks for the top 10 worst movies of 2017. Number 10 on my list, The Mummy. It's as if someone said, hey, you know that classic Boris Karloff horror movie, The Mummy? I think it would be a lot better if we remade it as an action film with Tom Cruise. The Mummy is a result of not only Hollywood's addiction to reboots, but franchises and extended universes as well. The Mummy was intended to be the first part of Universal's Dark Universe, a plan to bring the remakes of several classic horror films together, with a Bride of Frankenstein remake intended to be their next chapter of the franchise. After the failure of The Mummy, the Dark Universe looks to be in doubt, and I say good riddance. Number nine on my list is The Space Between Us. This is a science fiction movie your mom probably liked. The Space Between Us is a sob story teen romance between an Earth girl and the first boy born on Mars. While I could see potential in a story like this, this movie is pretty much just a Hallmark film with a special effects budget. It's sudsy and kind of boring and just another throwaway teen movie that looks like it could pass as a thinking person sci-fi film. Number eight, The Birth of the Dragon. A fictional retelling of the real-life fight between Bruce Lee and Wong Jack Man, Birth of the Dragon is a ridiculous movie that scraps what could have been a very interesting biopic. Although I liked Philip Ang's performance as Lee, portraying him as a cocky, take-on-all-comers martial artist, the movie makes a fatal flaw of wanting to be a cheesy martial arts B-movie that looks like it's right out of the 70s. The movie also adds a fictional character played by Billy Magnuson, which just makes me resent this movie even more. While this doesn't seem like a big deal, this exemplifies a major problem I have with a lot of Hollywood biopics that get made today. That problem being the way that influential people of color often have the focus and attention of their own movie siphoned from them by white supporting characters. Number seven, The Snowman. The words coherency and sense are non-existent in the world of the snowman. This seven-style mystery thriller is mashed together in one of the most confusing movies that got released last year. Characters pop in and out of the story, central themes are missing in action, and the director himself admitted that the movie isn't finished probably attempting to be something along the lines of the Girl with the Dragon Tattoo series, The Snowman is a maddening experience that is best avoided. Number six, The Bye Bye Man, Rings, and Wish Upon are all tied for my number six. These three movies are a collective representation of everything that pisses me off about modern horror films. Let's point out the overused tropes, shall we? Repetitive jump scares, again, Hollywood's obsession with reboots and sequels, and cliche cursed artifacts. There is no other genre of film as mass-produced as horror, and these three movies are the epitome of off-the-shelf fodder that take up valuable movie screens that could be showing something good and original. I'm done talking about these movies because, honestly, they're not even worth all that. Number five, Fifty Shades Darker. You know I thought the top four movies on my list were bad when a Fifty Shades movie is only number five. Fifty Shades Darker was exactly what I anticipated. Picking up where the first one left off, Anastasia Steele and Christian Grey decide to give their relationship another chance. Why? Because the movie says they have to. There is so much wrong with these movies. Anastasia is the plainest and most uninteresting female protagonist I've ever seen in a movie. Dakota Johnson always looks like she doesn't want to be in front of the camera, and the uncharismatic Jamie Dornan isn't much better. He's only here to do a couple scenes where he takes off his shirt or shows his ass, for the ladies, of course, but Fifty Shades Darker is just another bad romance movie based on a bad romance book. Number four, Death Note. I know very little about Death Note. I know what the concept is. A boy finds a magic notebook that kills everyone whose name is written down in it. But I can't tell you all the rules of the Death Note and characteristics of its characters. But that's okay, because I don't think this movie can either. I watched this movie with my brother, who is a big Death Note fan, and we both hated this crap. It's confusing, it's boring, and it doesn't feel like it goes anywhere. Willem Dafoe being casted as the demon Ryuk is the only thing about this movie that made sense to me. For newbies like me, Death Note isn't likely to spark an interest in its fandom, nor is it likely to please people who are already fans of the manga series it's based on. Number three, King Arthur Legend of the Sword. 
If you thought the new Transformers was a mistreatment of Archerian legends, then it would make a good companion piece for Legend of the Sword. Director Guy Ritchie does exactly what you expect in this poorly told adaptation of the stories of Arthur Pendragon. The characters talk a mile a minute, and scenes of things that happened 20 minutes ago interrupt scenes you're watching. There are also little things about this movie that pissed me off, like this bullshit slick back faux hawk haircut they gave Charlie Hunnam. Yeah, I'm sure that's faithful to the legend. I'm not lying when I say Legend of the Sword is damn near unwatchable. Number two, Kidnap. Poor Halle Berry. The Oscar curse has been so cruel to you. Aside from the criminally underrated Cloud Atlas, Barry hasn't made a single watchable film since her Best Actress win for Monster's Ball, and this thriller about a mother chasing after her kidnapped son is proof of that. She constantly has to stop, pull over, or turn around, but the kidnapper's vehicle is conveniently never more than a few car lengths away. The movie also uses the same shot of the speedometer jumping up in speed, even though we're shown from inside the car that the vehicle is almost always moving at the same rate. Although Barry and the movie's director are trying their best with the material they're given to work with, Kidnap is a Z-grade exploitation with a half-hearted message about child trafficking. And number one for worst movie of 2017, it's the obvious choice, the Emoji Movie. There are not enough bad things in the world to say about the Emoji Movie. It's loud. It's annoying. It's not funny. It's dumb. It doesn't make any sense. It's boring. It's convoluted. It's unoriginal. It's ugly. It's cynical. It's patronizing. It's mean-spirited. It's also an excuse for movie producers to pander to modern youth culture. The Emoji Movie pulls ideas from several far superior animated films and plugs countless phone apps and outdated social media references. What makes a movie like this so frustrating is how this was something that was made and marketed as being a feel-good animated adventure that families could enjoy, but it's not. It's a product and an attempt for companies to make money off saying, look kids, emojis, Twitter, Instagram, aren't these things cool and hip? It's insulting. The Emoji Movie goes down not just as the worst film of 2017, but one of the worst movies I've probably ever seen just because of how intellectually offensive it is. Fuck you, Emoji Movie. Fuck you. Those are my picks for the worst films of 2017. Until next time, I'm Logan D. McCoy, and this is Real McCoy Reviews.